Did you ever ask yourself why everyone is using stochastic gradient descent methods for machine learning model training? Yes? Then let's start learning why stochastic gradient descent methods are awesome and let's focus on the classic stochastic gradient descent method in this episode. In the last episodes we have used gradient descent in order to update the model weights, such that our linear regression model was able to fit the data. So how does gradient descent works again? Well, we had this loop that goes over the number of epochs, right? Inside of this loop, we computed the model prediction. The gradients. The loss. And we updated our weights. During one epoch, we have used the whole batch of training data in order to train our model. Our training set lived inside the matrix X-Train. Where the rows were the number of instances and the columns the features. Until now, we have only dealt with small training sets, for example with 1000 instances. But in reality, you will also work with very large data sets where computational complexity becomes the limiting factor. Imagine having this huge matrix of instances times features that you have to multiply with other matrices and vectors when you compute the gradient, for example. The computational burden will really kick in. In these cases, we can opt out from using gradient descent and we can use stochastic gradient descent. With stochastic gradient descent, we can trade off achieving faster iterations in exchange for a lower convergence rate. What does iteration mean specifically? Well, in order to understand this, I will show you what stochastic gradient descent does. So we have again our loop over the number of epochs. And inside of that loop, the first thing we will do is to shuffle the training set. Just randomly shuffling it, such that the instances are out of order. Afterwards, we do another loop, but this time over the number of instances in the training set. For each training instance, we are gonna do the following. First, we compute the model prediction on the single instance pair x i y i. So, x train i will be x i. This will be mean the same. And also for the, for the label, Then we will compute the loss. The gradient. And we will update our weights. Note that we added the subscript S, which means we computed the model prediction the loss of the gradient for a single instance. And well, that's it. That's already stochastic gradient descent. Very basic and simple algorithm. It has the word stochastic in it, since we are stochastically approximating the true gradient that we would have obtained in the standard gradient descent case. Also, in gradient descent we have updated our weights only once during each epoch. In stochastic gradient descent we update our weights multiple times, so m times during each epoch, where m is the number of instances. That is why we say that stochastic gradient descent is iterating faster. Many students are confused by the term faster iteration, since, since they think that stochastic gradient descent is computationally more efficient than gradient descent. And this is not the case. 
let's denote the time complexity of grain descent for one iteration of order O n d. Then the cost for one iteration in stochastic grain descent would be O d for one iteration. The reason is that we go over each instance separately in stochastic grain descent, but in total we are also go over all training instances, just that we are not doing it all at once as in comparison to gradient descent. So why would you use stochastic grain descent when the time complexity is basically the same for one epoch? So as I said, with stochastic grain descent we can trade off achieving faster iterations in exchange for a lower convergence rate. We have discussed the part about faster iterations, but what does lower convergence rate mean? So when talking about optimization algorithms, we talk often about convergence. A model does not have to converge to the optimal solution. It can be that a model diverges from the optimal set of rate parameters, and divergences can happen for multiple reasons. You could have a non-convex objective function, or your learning rate could be too large, or whatever you can think of. But when a model converges, we also want to know how fast it converges. So the convergence rate measures the time that the model needed to converge normalized over the number of iteration that it has gone over. In stochastic gradient descent, we will need more iterations than in gradient descent case, since we introduce a lot more noise during our training process. So how would that look like? So we have two graphs here. On the left hand side we have gradient descent, where we have on the y-axis the loss and on the x-axis the number of epochs. I also denoted here the optim optimal solution that we get, so the minimal loss value that we can achieve. So when our model converges we will see most often like this a very smooth curve that goes down until we reach the minimum. In the stochastic gradient descent case, when our model converges, it will also converge to the minimum loss value, but you will see it goes up and down very much. It goes up and down the whole time. And this is the noise. What is that noise? You can imagine the noise in the following way. Let's say we compute the loss for, for the first instance and the loss is 100. For the next instance, the loss value could be 80. For the next instance, the loss could be 140. So the variance between these loss values is greater than in the gradient descent case. But the trend is the same. If our model converges, the trend is that the loss values go down during the overall training process. But they will continuously go up and down like crazy and oscillate around the minimum loss value. Let's go over an example. So, so it could be that our model converges in 100,000 epochs with, gra with gradient descent in one minute. The same model needs 10,000 epochs in 30 seconds with stochastic grain descent. Thus, gradient descent only needed 100,000 iterations in order to converge. Let's say we have 10,000 instances, then stochastic grain descent needed 100 million iterations in order to converge. When we divide the 100 million through the 30 seconds, we would get approximately 3 million and 330,000 iterations per second for stochastic gradient descent. Gradient descent would have, in comparison, only 1,667 iterations per second. So we can see that stochastic gradient descent could do mo many more iterations per second, but also needed to do many, many more iterations in total than gradient descent. But why is it the case that often stochastic gradient descent is faster than gradient descent, since the time complexity for one epoch is more or less the same? Well, stochastic gradient descent does many more iterations during one epoch 
Each update can poke the weight parameters into the right direction. When we do gradient descent, gradient descent has only one poke available in order to poke the weight parameters into the right direction. So stochastic gradient descent will poke the weight parameters faster and then the training can be already finished after already reaching for example 10,000 epochs, while gradient descent needs 100,000 epochs. This delta in the number of epochs that stochastic gradient descent needs in comparison to gradient descent is the time-saving factor. So we have talked about the noise in stochastic gradient descent. At first we could think that this is a bad thing, but actually this noise can help our stochastic gradient descent function to generalize better. Think about having an objective function with a lot of bumps, with local minima that are not yet the optimal solution. In pure gradient descent, it can happen that the rate parameters get stuck in such a bump. Since stochastic gradient descent has a lot more noise in it, it can happen that the model hops over this bump, leaving the suboptimal solution and reaching the optimal solution in the end. So noise is not entirely bad. One thing that is left that you will need to know about stochastic gradient descent is the case when we use mini badges in order to train our model. So in gradient descent we used all training instances. In stochastic gradient descent we only use a single instance per iteration. So mini badges is the natural compromise between gradient descent and pure stochastic gradient descent because both has their, their advantages and disadvantages as we have talked about them. In, the, in a mini batch grade descent, you process a small subset of the training set in each iteration. Stochastic grade descent has often the problem that when you reached almost the minimum, then the noise will keep the loss bumping up and down, oscillating around the optimal solution. But when we have mini batches of sizes 16, 32, 64, 128, etc., when we can observe the larger the batch sizes, the more stable the training gets. But therefore, one iteration is more computationally ex more expensive. So, how can one imagine this mini batch? So, we said that our X training matrix at S rows the instances and features as the columns. So what we could do is we could take or divide the instances inside of this matrix and three smaller matrices. So in total, these three matrices would contain the same number of instances as our original X train had but we wouldn't do the computations on a single instance when using our stochastic gradient descent approach, but we will compute the model prediction, uh, the gradient, the loss and so on, on these small mini batches that could contain, for example, 16, 32, 64, 128 instances inside of them. And they have another advantage. We live in the modern area of distributed computing. With clever tricks, you can parallelize the training of your model on these mini batches, leveraging good performance and stable training. I hope this video got you motivated diving deeper into the world of machine learning. If you got questions on stochastic gradient descent, write them down below in the comment section. It's really important that you understand stochastic gradient descent. It's one of the most important optimization techniques that we have at our disposal in machine learning and deep learning. In the next episode, we will code the stochastic gradient descent algorithm, also with mini batches and see how it works in practice. Stay healthy and see you until then.